What's going on guys? Today we're looking at some parts from Nitop. They sent us their third gen Tundra front and rear uh, recovery points, also their stealth front bumper. When it comes to recovery points, these things are super beefy and the install is gonna be super simple as well. We're gonna go ahead and take a couple bolts out of the rear of the Tundra and these are gonna mount right to the side and uh, we'll show you how to do that. Once we get the rear installed, we'll move up to the front. We'll get the front recovery points installed and then the stealth bumper. You don't have to use the stealth bumper. If you just want the recovery points, you can do that. Uh, they make a template that you can put onto your plastic valence and you can cut the slot so that these can protrude through. We'll show you how to do that too if you don't want to buy the stealth bumper. When it comes to the color of these tow hooks, if you don't want red, they also have black so they don't stand out as much. One thing I want to note is the third gen Tundra comes with no recovery points at all. So whether you're stuck or you wanna pull someone out that's stuck, you really don't have a good way of doing it. So these things are really gonna come in handy. They're not only gonna be functional, they're gonna look good as well. So with the Tundra up in the air, Taking a look at the rear uh, recovery points, we're going to be using the factory bolts in these two bolt uh, hole locations. And then this one here on the bottom, we're gonna use one of the supplied bolts and nuts. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look here underneath the Tundra. I'll show you which two bolts we're gonna be removing. And we can go ahead and get these installed. So looking underneath the Tundra here, we have the bracket here for your uh, hitch receiver. So we're gonna be taking out this bolt right here. Also this one here. This one in the center, you can leave there. And then the provided bolt and nut, we're gonna be putting through this slot right here. All right, so the bolts that are on your uh, hitch receiver on the frame are gonna be a 22. And then the new bolts that come with the uh, recovery hooks are gonna be a 24. So I'm gonna go ahead and use an impact. If you don't have one, you can use a breaker bar uh, and probably need a wrench on the other side to hold the nut. So we're gonna go ahead and break these free. Now we can go ahead and take one of the uh, tow hooks and we're gonna go ahead and hold it up against the frame. Get two of the bolts slipped in there so it doesn't fall. Go ahead and put the nuts on the back side, get those started. Now we can take bolt and washer that was provided and we'll go ahead and Put that through here. Washer and nut on the other side. So once you get the three bolts in there, you do have some adjustment up and down. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down with it all the way in the down position. I think that'll be fine. And uh, that's pretty much it. We can go ahead then and do the other side. So we just got finished with the rear, super easy, maybe took five minutes to get it done. So now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move up to the front of the Tundra, we're gonna show you how to uh, install the front ones, both with your factory valence and the stealth bumper from Nitop. All right, so we're up front taking a look at the front tow hooks here for the Tundra. And I took a closer look at ours and we actually have the diode dynamics uh, hidden light bar in there. So the bracket for that is gonna make the install a little bit more difficult. We're gonna get through it and I'm gonna show you how to get these installed with that. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get the front valence off. Obviously, if you're gonna be using this, you wanna cut the hole with this off the vehicle. So from the backside, there's a bunch of clips that you're gonna have to depress in order to get this off. You have a bunch running along the bottom and then up inside, you have some towards the top. It's kind of hard to see and it's a little bit harder to do if you're not doing this on the lift, but we'll try to get a shot in here the best that we can to show you what, where they are. You can see a bunch here along the bottom. So you'll have to go ahead and uh, depress this 
and push it through. And once you start going down the line and getting all of them done, it'll start to come off. And along the top, you can see there's clips up there. And then you're also going to have one on each side of the valence. So now I'm going to go ahead and just work on getting all these clips out. I'm going to get all the bottom ones out first. And then we can go ahead and work on the top and the sides. So I'm going to pull this off just a little bit. There's two clips on the side or on the bottom here. And that should help you get this off because the one clip that is on the side is kind of, kind of tight. This one right here. So with the front valence off, you can see right here we have the bracket for our light bar kit, which is going to get in our way a little bit. We have to take these two 17 millimeter bolts out and also these two 14 millimeter bolts. The one is holding the bottom of the bracket in place and that's where we're going to have a little bit of uh, interference with the uh, recovery hook so we might just have to put a couple of washers in there to space this side out so that it is nice and level but we're going to go ahead and take these two bolts out and these two bolts right here. So with those four bolts out, we can go ahead now and test fit the uh, recovery hook. And we found out that this thing is really not gonna be able to get bolted up here with the diode bracket uh, in our way. We know that this is a popular uh, mod here on the Tundra. So if you have this and you want to install these tow hooks, the thing what we're gonna do is cut this off here. You're not gonna have the bottom bolt holding the bracket in place, but I think it's gonna be sturdy enough and your light bar is not gonna go anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this off, get the bottom piece out of our way, and then we can go ahead and install this just like you are supposed to. with that bracket out of our way. We can now get this thing bolted up and we should be good to go. So we have both sides of this unbolted now and I can push on the bracket and it's barely moving the light bar. So with us cutting this off and not having the bottom bolts in, it's perfectly fine. All right, so we got both sides of the diode light bar brackets cut. So I'm gonna go ahead now, we can get the bolt started for this and then there is extra riv nuts provided so we can once we get this up in place we can mark out where we're going to need to drill you don't have to do this but it is supplied so we can mark this out take this back off and then we can go ahead and drill the holes and put the riv nuts in place So as you can see, we have the two 17 millimeter bolts in here and we have the two 14 millimeter bolts. You are using the factory bolts that you took out, but you have an additional hole here and you have a hole here. This is where you can add an extra two bolts so that this is a little bit more rigid. So in order to install these extra two bolts here, you're gonna have to cut this out, the section right here. That way you can get in here with a drill and you can drill it out properly and also get those bolts in. Um, so if you're going to be running the factory valence, you want to take into consideration that you are going to be cutting out, you know, at least one of the spots where the clips are going in. If you're going to be running the stealth bumper and um, the all steel one, then you don't really have to worry about that. If you were to cut this out, you're not going to be using any of these uh, to get that installed. All right, so we got the air saw here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it right on the very end. And then I'll cut it like right after this first clip here. All 
I want to note, if you don't want to cut this, uh, the other thing you can do is remove the front bumper completely. Uh, so if that's something you want to do, there's a link in the description showing you how to remove the front bumper on your Tundra. All right, so we got both tow hooks in place. We got the bottom here cut out. I'm going to go ahead now and mark out where these holes are. So we got the tow hooks back off and we're going to go ahead now and mark the holes here with a center punch. So in order to get the rivet nuts in that are supplied by NITOP, we're gonna have to go ahead and drill a, what they say, 15 millimeter hole, which if you do the conversion comes out to be about 590. So I have a 19 30 seconds drill here, which is 593. That's gonna get us pretty close to where we need to be. I'm going to drill this hole with a little bit smaller of a drill first and then go with the bigger one. If I go straight to the big one, it's probably gonna walk around and it's not gonna be centered exactly where I want it to be. So I got a quarter inch drill bit here. I'm gonna drill these out first with that. So we got the holes drilled out on the front crash bar. Now we're gonna go ahead and put in the riv nuts. So if you have one of these, most likely you don't have the size that you need. So we need an M12. Uh, this only goes up to an M8. So we can't use this to get it installed. So we're gonna do the old bolt and nut trick. So I found a bolt that's the same thread as the riv nut and I found a nut that is bigger. So it just slips right over the threads and then I have a washer on there and then the riv nut is gonna go on. So what you're gonna do is hold this with a wrench and then put a socket on there, tighten it down. This is going to get crushed in your uh, front crash bar, crash bar. And then when you take this out, this will be stuck inside and then you can thread the bolts in. So we're gonna give this thing a go. Hopefully it works out. I have everything together. I'm gonna slide that into the hole. We will put our wrench on there our socket. Go ahead and tighten this down. All right, so we were trying to get that to get started in there. I took out this washer because I think it was just making the riv nut just spin and it wasn't actually starting to compress it. I took this out and it seems like it's going to work a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and we can try this again and hopefully we can get the thing to start crushing inside the bumper. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit it with the impact just a little bit to get it started because doing it with the ratchet and holding the wrench was kind of getting a little hard, so. But. All right, let's see how tight we can get this thing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and just do the same thing on the other three holes. And then once we have that done, we can go ahead and start bolting up the uh, tow hooks. So we have all four of those uh, riv nuts installed. Now we can go ahead and take the uh, recovery hooks. We can get these bolted up in place. So we're gonna be using the four bolts that came out of your truck. We're gonna be reinstalling those. And then we're gonna be putting two supplied bolts in those riv nuts that we just installed. Now I got two of the bolts and two washers that they give you. We can go ahead and get these threaded into those riv nuts. So the factory 17 millimeter bolts are going to get torqued down to 75 foot pounds. And then those two factory 14 millimeter bolts are going to be 55 foot pounds. And then the two additional bolts, if you added those, uh, those are going to be 75 as well. So I got these two torqued down. As you saw, 
The 14 millimeter ones, you're supposed to torque down to 55 foot pounds and I was tightening them and it felt like I just kept tightening and tightening and I wasn't really comfortable continuing because it just, I don't know. I have them tight with a regular ratchet, but I didn't want to strip them out because they are only riv nuts. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable where they're at. If you go to tighten these down and you feel like you're okay torquing them to 55 foot pounds, go right ahead. Um, the ones that we installed the riv nuts in, those are supposed to torque to 75 foot pounds as well, which again, I don't really feel comfortable torquing those that tight with a riv nut because if that riv nut were to break free, then you're not gonna be able to loosen the bolt either. So I'm just going to tighten these down as much as I can with a regular normal ratchet and we're gonna leave it at that. That ain't going nowhere. So we got the factory plastic valence here and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to lay out the template and how to get it cut. So since we did cut those diode light brackets, we don't have to make any adjustments. We can just lay this on here right as you should. And I have a silver Sharpie so I can lay out where we're gonna cut. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my lines. The opening on this template is almost identical to the size of the recovery hook. So you might have to cut it out and then do some trimming afterwards to open up the hole to make it a little bit bigger because this is gonna be pretty tight. So I'm gonna use a razor blade, I'm gonna heat it up. And it should melt through this plastic pretty easy and get us a, get us a nice cut. All right, so we got the one side cut and uh, it cut through it very easily, but it doesn't look the best. So I'm gonna clean it up with this uh, sanding wheel. I have to make it a little bit bigger anyway, so it fits over the tow hook. On this side, I'm going to drill the corners with a eighth inch drill bit and I'm just gonna use a Dremel with a cutting wheel. It'll probably be a cleaner, uh, cleaner way of doing it, but I wanted to try it that way. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this side done. I'm gonna go ahead and try to fit this on. The, the template that you use is gonna get you close, but you're gonna have to do some trimming on either side to get it to fit right. So I'm gonna try to get this in here and see if it fits. So we got the valence on. As you can see, there's a couple spots here that is tight and it's not allowing it to fit perfectly. So I'm gonna take note of where it's touching, I'm gonna to take this back off, do some more trimming, and then we can do another test fit.
All right, we're finished up with the factory valence. I went ahead and took that off. Now I'm gonna show you how to get the stealth bumper installed. So we have the bumper here. We have these, which are shims, so we can get the uh, bumper nice and level so it sits nice against the factory bumper. And then we have the bolts and the washers to put this on. This is pretty easy. We're going to slip this over the tow hooks that we just installed. And then on top of the tow hooks, there are uh, two threaded holes. And then we are going to just put the bolts right through here, bolt this right to the tow hooks, and that's it. So we're gonna take the bumper here and we're going to line it up with the tow hooks. We'll get this slipped on. All right, so with the bumper resting here, we can get these bolts started. So if you look, you can see we have a big gap here between the tow hook and the bumper. And that's where these uh, spacers are gonna come in handy. We're gonna go ahead and fill that gap because if I were to tighten down these bolts and push this up, it would end up pushing everything up here and this, and it would not make it look very good. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take these bolts out, put some of those spacers in there to fill that gap and then reinstall the bolts. So we have a total of four spacers. So we can only put two on each side and I don't know if that's gonna be enough to get it perfect, but that's what we're gonna have to do. All right guys, there you have it, the NITOP front and rear recovery points and the hybrid bumper for the third gen Tundra. If you guys wanna pick a set of these up for your Tundra, you can head over to yodaexpedition.com. Our link is right down in the description. Hopefully this video helped you guys when it comes to the installation of these. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.